<laughs> there we go. This might help. Oof, yeah, it did. Thanks. Alright, so next question. What kind of girl do you like? Oh. oh, touchy. You first. Sorry, I don't swing that way. Sure, I have no qualms about saying a girl is cute or cool, but nope, I prefer men in my bed. Oh boy. Now you. Just calm down. Oh no. <laughs> the girls with light colored hair. Light colored hair. Yeah, you know, like redheads. Redheads are... Attractive redheads are at least 200% more attractive than the other two hair colors. It's just science. What about white like your boss? You were just setting me up for that comment, weren't you? Sorry, it's just that when she got here with the bucket of wings, your eyes pretty much started sparkling. <laughs> I'm imagining like the little chibi Jill that is on the phone, but with sparkling eyes now. Your whole behavior transformed. You became giddy and cheerful all of a sudden. Hey, I can't blame you. She's pretty nice. Dana's awesome. I just felt like teasing you. <sighs> so light colored hair. What about blondes? Do you like me? Yeah, I guess. Let's say I'm into girls and I start hitting on you. Would you go along with it? <laughs> nice body, perfect face, and a good apartment. I would have never let you go. <laughs> okay then, enough tangents. Why don't you tell me why you were feeling bad these last days? What? Oh, that. I told you not to think too much about it. And I told you I want to know. <laughs> Come on, Jill, you've heard my problem so many times now. Now I want to help you. Come on, come here. Eh? I told you to sit here, come on. Eh? What? What are you... <laughs> this is weird. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. I don't know why, but her face is a uh, sprite like that. For some reason, it's not what I was expecting. Also, what's up with her eyes? Like, half white and half, like, darker? She's like some kind of... It's like when people in anime are possessed by something? That's really cool. Now I'm the bartender and you're the client. Hardly. The bartending station only works with me. I see. Okay, then I move this here. Ah, 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 ah. I got Doki Doki Literature Club flashbacks for a second. All right, move this here, click here, and that was a hack. Also, was that the Alice Rabbit logo? Now it works for you, for me, and that dog in the Hawaiian shirt. Why with him too? <laughs> He's a dog in a Hawaiian shirt. Right, how did you even manage to? Oh yeah, hacker, right? Now we've changed roles. You've been feeling bad, do mind telling me why? It's a long story. I don't even know where to start. I like Jill's hair. Jill's hair is cool. Start from the beginning. And when you get to the end, stop! Okay then, it's something that goes back to my college years. Oh, that's taking it way back. Back in the compulsory education, I never made too much of an effort, but I managed to get high grades. Me too. Even in PE, I managed to do well and always get perfect grades. And then of course, when I got to college, it started getting hard. I don't have this part of the story yet. I've not been to college yet. I have this perfectionist streak that wouldn't let me fail anything. I do not have that. That's why my grades started not being so great towards the end of my schooling. Burning my eyelashes studying, I eventually managed to keep up the good grades. After about half of the career, I met a student teacher. Her name was Lenore. Oh. Oh, so this is where this is going. She helped me a lot with my studies and even got me into stuff that gave me more credits. 
I really liked her, and after some time, I found out that she liked me too. Oh ho ho. We started going out, I met all of her family even, and... You want a drink? What? A drink. Around this time, there's usually a pause that makes you offer a drink to the client. There was no such pause. Please, I want to test this whole bartending interface. A sugar rush, then. You can't mess that up. Right. <laughs> Jill asked for a sugar rush. Now how did this go? I liked that Alma's name was like superimposed over there. Alright, sugar rush. Okay. Oh no, I messed it up. <laughs> because I'm an idiot and would be horrible at bartending. Apparently, because I messed up the simplest drink. Here. Thanks. How is it? Like I said, you can't mess up a sugar rush. Hmm. <laughs> I have this gut feeling that with your body, you'd make a better bartender than me. Oh, man. <clears throat> You're selling yourself too short. You're cute, you know? People don't get into bars for cuteness, though. You've obviously never been to a cat bar, then. <laughs> oh, it's, that's a real thing. Or she said that like it's a real thing. That's hilarious. Besides, my breasts can be a hassle when trying to move around this stuff. This kind of stuff. So I'll keep telling the story. Huh. Well, as the career went on, it got harder and harder. The last year and a half of it became nothing but study session after study session. Investigations, my thesis. When the graduation ceremony came, I had to make it be a speech, and suddenly while reading said speech, I almost had a panic attack. Oh, no. Fear of public speaking? Probably just pent-up stress from everything. Rather. I realized I lost about a year and a half of my life to just something that she wasn't happy doing. I tried to remember if I did anything fun at all, but all I could remember is studying and investigating new topics. I didn't even enjoy doing all of that, so I was just standing there and the satisfaction of graduating was minimal. Yeah. I realized I had only gone through the motions day after day from high school to graduating. I felt like whole years of my life just slipped through my fingers. Oh man. I never stopped to think if I enjoyed what I was doing. In fact, I never stopped. But at that point I stopped and I realized I needed a breather or something. Did I even like that career? It was all terrifying. I needed all of my strength not to start running like a panicked mess. Oh man. Hmm. So a couple of months later, I get an offer to start working at this big research facility, and she says no. Lenore was ecstatic, she was so proud of me back then. But I was just scared. That would be my job, I'd spend my life explaining what I did during that year and a expanding on what I did during that year and a half, that she wasn't even really happy with. What if I had a sudden realization like the one I had graduating, but when I turned 40, oh no. The old midlife crisis. I didn't know what to do, but I sure wasn't taking that offer. <laughs> I told Lenore and she freaked out. She confessed that she was jealous because she never got such a chance. Oh. Things developed pretty quickly. She said one too many things. I said one too many things. Oh. In the end, I just stormed out of her house and I broke the vase. I broke a vase in the process. Oh. After that, I never spoke to her again. Darn. I'm sorry, I... I suddenly feel bad for pushing you to tell me all that. Why are you feeling so bad about that after all this time, though? And that, and therein lies the true horror <laughs> of the story, unless you've been feeling that bad for years. I have, but it's not just because of that. Eh. The other day, Lenore's sister, Gabrielle, came into this bar. Apparently, Lenore died last week. Yeah. Localized nanomachine rejection. A heart attack. 
Apparently she had it for a long time, but never told anyone. Oh, man. And coincidentally, it got worse after I left. That just sucks. And I just can't stop thinking about it, wonder if maybe me being there would have made a difference. And if it's true that she had that for a long time, why didn't she tell me she was sick when we were together? I don't know, I just feel like all kinds of failure. Aww. Jill. And to make it worse, I also lashed out at Gabby. She was being irrational, to be fair. And go dropping that news on someone who was really close to the deceased. Okay, maybe not sister close at this point. And estranged, yes, but drop that news and then just prod them with nothing but this resenting finger of anger. And yeah, she was grieving too, so she couldn't be rational, but I don't really blame either party there. Yeah, she was blaming me for her sister's death and all, but she's just a kid. She lost her sister, who pretty much raised her on her own. And to top it all off, I suddenly can't remember what stopped me from apologizing. Pride, fear, a stupid effort to leave the most awesome person I loved is a thing of the past. Who cares, I lost my chance to apologize to her forever. Truly forever. Oh, I'm so terrible. Very selfish. Oh. She sucked. No, this sucks. I didn't mean to say that. I honestly don't know what to say. I didn't expect the story to be this. I. Yo, know, poop tender. Yes. Can you get me a big beer? Coming right up. Welcome back, Alma. What makes a beer in this thing? Oh, man. So as depressing as that story was, being recapped, I still like the, uh, I still like the dynamic we have with these two. It's really nice. One beer. Oh, oh, I forgot. Uh, I'm sorry. You sure those glasses of yours work? Well, I don't need to get them checked, but never mind. Sorry for the mistake. Hey, Jill, what kind of girl was Lenore? Hmm, well... She was calm and smart. Back in college, I was too thick-headed to get riled up easily. And got riled up easily. Stressed was my default state. I'm pretty sure that's most college students, isn't it? So, just like you're behaving right now? Shut up, I was worse. Can't picture that. Don't, it's embarrassing. Oh, man. Anyway, she was always there, finding a way to cool me down. She was also able to hold conversations about pretty much any topic. One time I saw her talking about video games, go from talking about video games to talking about sports. I could only do that if we were talking about soccer. All that variety while still being a hardcore scientist. She would always push me into social interactions. If she saw me by myself, she would drag me with her. Oh. Oh. Watching people is fine, but talking to them is better, she would say. Meh. Lenore would always present me to her many acquaintances as the girl I don't mind cuddling with for hours. That's, that's hilarious. And cool. Man, I'm gonna miss her. After a point, I didn't even think about getting back into a relationship with her, but she was such an awesome person, I just wanted to apologize. And now... Uh, man. Jill needs a hug. <laughs> You know, in a cruel twist of irony, she's the one that made me pick up bartending. Oh? Back when I was thinking on what to do with my life, I remember the night we spent in the club. She started talking about how the drinks were synthesized, the chemistry involved, and the reactions and all that. Everything sounded so fascinating. I remember her saying that her talk made me want to start mixing drinks. She said if everything else fails, why not take up bartending? Huh, interesting. Are you okay? For some value of okay, yeah. It's just... I wanted to thank you, Alma. Thank me. I guess I just needed someone to tell of this to, and you were the one. 
You volunteered yourself, you insisted on listening to me. You stood there, listening the whole time from beginning to end. But I'm pretty sure Dana or Gil would have done that too, if they, they volunteered as well. I know I might not be the most expressive person, and I'm not the one to spout love or fluffiness, but I really like you. Maybe I'm just a bartender and you're just a client, but I really appreciate your friendship, or, the, or at the very least your patronage. Oh, I really enjoy working for you. That's awesome. Jill, are you dying? Oh, <laughs> I hope not. Shut up, I'm trying to have a heart to heart here. Her <laughs> face. Oh man. Sorry, it's just... It's just weird for you to get so sappy. Well, I just realized that the saddest thing is how I'll never be able to make amends. And it hurts. You know? I never, and I mean never, ever want to feel that way again. I don't want someone to suddenly exit my life and have the last memory of them involve some- My last memory of them involve something nasty. I don't want that lingering grief for having a burned br burned a bridge on a will. whim. I screwed that up a lot. I want to avoid that at any cost, and if it means breaking character every once in a while, then so be it. I'll let everyone know how I really feel about them. If I ever fight with them, I'll swallow my pride, muster all the courage I can, and be the one to apologize. I hate feeling like this. Hate it, hate it. <laughs> That's a nice resolution. Maybe I'll copycat. Be a copycat and do the same. Alright, enough sappiness. Get back here. I'm on duty, you know? Fine. It's almost closing time anyways. It was fun while it lasted, though. Hey. Yeah? I mean it, you know. Thanks for everything today. Oh, Silly Jill, you listen to my problems and, you, and I listen to yours. That's what friends are for, right? Oh. Right. I'll be leaving now. Oh, before I forget. Did you ever talk about all this with your parents? They know the basics, but I haven't told them about Lenora's death yet. Yeah. Why don't you do that sometime? I don't know. I don't want to bother them with my problems. Don't be silly. They're your parents. They live to share your problems. You should try having a talk like this with them sometime. They'll appreciate it. Anyway, I'm out. See you on Sunday. Take care. That Alma girl sure is nice. Ah, boss, did you hear all that? Not all of it, but a good chunk, at the very least. Your expression changed a lot already. It did. You look happier, and that's always good. Oh. Anyways, let's call it a day. I expect an even brighter Jill tomorrow. Right. Oh yeah, boss, about those chicken wings. Idiots at the spicy chicken. Sorry, Dana, we won't have enough spices for your order until tomorrow, they said. Is that how they treat their regulars? Mumble mumble. Call the manager mumble mumble. Boss. <laughs> oh. I screwed up the mistake as Alma. That shouldn't... That should not be held against Jill. That's messed up. <laughs> Alright, anyway. <laughs> and Cherish the hacker. She's a good friend. Oh, Jill's power didn't get, get cut. This gives her peace of mind. Oh. Have a nice day. <clears throat> Bill paid. Didn't you have a boyfriend named Bill? <laughs> That's funny. Alrighty. Well, we've been doing this for an hour. But I really want to get to the mega Christmas party. Is anyone into wrestling here? I became a huge fan of GSF very recently. It's a really solid product in mine. Better than the E? <laughs> I wonder what they're referring to there. Amazing how all the words, and yet I understand nothing. I like the match quality, but I wish they gave a bit more importance to the mid card. Are they still forcing 66 American Kid into the main event? Yep, yeah, he's going to face Yusuke at the Dome Show. Why don't they push the great DK instead? He's much more talented than 66. <laughs> oh man. Because American Kid actually moves merch under like your indie darling. I want to marry Yusuke. Who's hyped for the women's championship? That one should be the main event, not the turn we're getting instead. 66 is pretty good, let's just watch some of his work in Japan. 
Everyone tells me 66 was better in Japan, but all I see is locks and arm bars. Nothing impressive. Wrestling is fake. <laughs> but, uh, I imagine that's a rather accurate depiction there. Update, we're still... Uh, model, oh man, Model Warrior Julianne returns. Is that a tear in your eye? No. Classic mo magical mo <clears throat> show Model Warrior Julianne is coming back to public television this February for almost after two decades of absence. Even though the show has been on demand, ever on every on demand service for a while now, most of Glitch City's citizens need to think twice before describing to any non essential service. Especially the lower classes who have a limited number of internet purchases per year. Excuse me. The show's return is certainly welcome. Today's parents will finally be able to share a piece of their childhood <clears throat> with their kids without risking dinner or breakfast. Oh no. I wonder if she's among those 80. Oh man. Nano Machine Redaction has taken 80 lives this year. The Health Observatory just released their annual report on Nano Machine Rejection cases. The total number no, wow, I screwed that all sorts of up. The total number of reported cases has risen to 80, an increase from the 65 cases reported last year. Nano Machine pollution was str particularly strong this year due to recent protests, wrote the observatory. Protests caused the police force to release new varieties of nano machines. Nano machines. Their function is still unclear, but according to our sources, they are intended for crowd control purposes. It is unlikely we'll find a cure in the near future, and we hope all cases like this will be come rare in the following years. All right, Lilim receiving. It looks like there were a uh, spooky or a made-up story. It looks like we were able to record a tr and transcribe one of the messages sent from one of the comprised signals. Joe Wren, the anchor from the popular TV newscast, served as our very own test subject for the investigation. White Noise, who are you? Are you really alive? Laughs, you're special to me. You're everything to me. It's time to become one. White Noise intensifies. End of transmission developing. You know, it's funny. I think I read a thing... Or I read a headline, I didn't even read the article, so the amount of truth behind it is probably non-existent. But I read it, something with it being like headline, blah blah blah, Alexis Am Alexa Amazon Echo. Um, what am I saying? Okay, Alexis Am Alexa Amazon Echo, creepy message, something or other. So it's funny that I just read that here. Alright, anyway, I suppose we'll save it now. Uh... <clears throat> Call it a recording session for now. I might just stop this one, launch into going to record another one, because I want to get to the Mega Christmas thing. It sounds exciting. But as far as this video is concerned, I am going to cut it here. Thank you for watching, and as always, Follow me to Apex.